Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Subaru Tribeca. The mechanical part of the transmission by and large does not create hassle. The experience of creating powerful all-wheel drive vehicles and the availability of drives with the required safety margin effects. Still, 220 or 260 atmospheric forces is not so much for these cars. While failures of the temperature sensor of the rear gearbox do not count, there is a purely electrical problem. We'll have to explain separately about the type of drive. For some reason, many are sure that a Subaru with an automatic transmission has a rear axle drive, but this is not so. The clutch block in the automatic transmission, which is responsible for the operation of the four-wheel drive, is a locking system and doesn't serve to connect the front rear axle. The differential here is simple, open and symmetrical, it is simply made in the form of a planetary gear. Cars with manual gearboxes, which in theory exist, have a more classic type of differential, and the blocking there is already a vicious coupling. But the chances of finding such a car are minimal. Both in America and in Russia there are very few family SUV lovers on mechanics. Reasons not to be said about the mechanical box are added by an excellent automatic. A 5-speed automatic transmission of the 5E80 series, one of the variants of the Jetco JR57E, specifically configured for a non-standard installation on Subaru. The basic Jetco automatic transmission is not bad anyway, but Subaru has, but Subaru has made many changes to its design aimed at improving reliability. It, for example, has a standard additional filter and it's tuned moderately conservatively without extreme modes of torque converter blocking. As a result, it's very good for source and pleasant sensations if you take your time. True, the fuel consumption is too large, 16-19 liters per 100 km are quite real figures, but this is more a merit of the motors than the automatic transmission settings. A good design is not a guarantee that everything will be fine with the box. There are many ways to screw it up. The standard cooling system at the box depends on the market and vehicle equipment, so cars from the USA without a factory tow bar do not have an automatic transmission radiator, and all European cars and samples with the option of towing a trailer from the USA come with a standard additional radiator. It should be noted that the mass of the car for this box is rather the limiting one, almost 2 tons. However, together with a powerful motor they create a consistently high load. Another ton or two from above will overload the automatic transmission with a guarantee, and an additional radiator doesn't help. It is noted that trailbacks who hold trailers for at least a short time have dead automatic transmissions, even with runs noticeably less than 200,000, and an abnormally installed tow bar without modifying the cooling system is a very alarming sign, because even a single overheating will surely start a destructive process inside. An additional external radiator is generally a great thing, even if you don't carry any trailers. In the urban cycle, American cars have an oil temperature of 115-120 degrees, which is already a bit too much, and only on the highway the box is cooled to the optimum 80-90. Another risk factor besides trailers and overheating is, of course, ultimately maintenance. Replacing the external filter of the automatic transmission at an official service is a rather expensive procedure, primarily because it's necessary to remove the bumper regularly. Although in fact it's enough to bend the locker to the left wheel, there will be enough space. Look carefully at the condition of the filter. If the owner has not changed it for a long time, then the chances of a normal condition of the automatic transmission are significantly reduced. And it is recommended to change the oil every 40,000 km. This is the official recommendations for our conditions. The best mileage for a planned overhaul is 150,000 km. The most heavily loaded valve body solenoids, linear pressure and torque converter blocking and the lining of this very blocking are usually fit at this point. It is also recommended to proactively change two RPM sensors. Sometimes during this, the inspection process additional problems are revealed, especially if the oil was changed less often than it should be. Subaru doesn't produce original solenoids, only the entire valve body and 15,000-17,000 euro for an assembled part looks somewhat expensive. Original repair kits are also expensive. But for old well body revisions, 31705AA620 and 31705AA680 solenoids from Hyundai are suitable and for more recent revisions, the line pressure solenoids can be selected among Toyota, part numbers 3521-03-3020 for U. 15OE and other icing boxes. In general, look on the resources of Subaru drivers for data on the interchangeability of these elements. There were dozens of well-body revisions in total and theoretically the newer 
the valve body, the more stable it works, but in practice the resource depends more on operational factors. There were boxes of the first series in absolutely good condition with runs over 300,000 and dead automatic transmission of the latest releases. The mechanics of this box are quite reliable. The main problem in this part is the breakdown of the front axle drive shaft and its planetary differential gear. It breaks down when overloaded. There are also complaints about the resource of the oil pump of the boxes. Any operation with dirty oil due to too rare replacement finishes it. The resource of the brake band and the overrunning clutch of the overdrive drum is less than the total resource of the box, but usually their breakdown is an indicator of very high mileage or long-term unresolved problems of the valve body. The engines of the EZ family are six-cylinder opposites, which have already been tested on the Legacy and Outback before Tribeca since 2000s. From 2006 to 2007, the big Subaru SUV was given a 3-liter version of the ES30D, 245 horsepower. From 2008 to the end, the 3.6-liter EZ36D, 260 horsepower. It's not hard to guess that the later is not very popular in Russia due to its disadvantages capacity. There are many differences between the modifications. Motor before installing are equipped with phase regulator only at the inlet, but also have an AVLS valve lift control system, a la Honda's VTEC. The 3.6 AVLS engines do not, but there are phase regulators on the exhaust shafts. In general, the design has been significantly optimized. First of all, the improvement in cooling is noted. Despite the increase in the working volume, the motor is less prone to overheating. The cylinder block is aluminum with cast iron liners, and for assembly and disassembly, you need to remove the piston pins through the holes in the cylinders. And if on four-cylinder engines it looks albeit unusual but seems to be quite logical, then removing the piston pin from the second and third in-depth cylinders with the help of special mandrel can hardly be called a perversion, however specialized services do it. Timing drive three chains. To drive the timing shafts and the middle one connects the crankshaft and the oil pump pulley, from which the chains are already driven to the shafts. And each has tensioners, dampers and everything is covered with a monstrous aluminum cover. The intake manifold is plastic. Aluminum was on older versions of EZ motors, which were not installed on the Tribeca without any tricks with variable geometry. Ignition by separate modules for a spark plug, electronic throttle, conventional distributed injection. The set of folds is pretty standard for Subaru engines. Leaks are a very big problem. Due to the layout, many joints can filter oils even when the engine is off. Unlike conventional vertical engines, oil is not collected in the sealed crankcase, but is present in large quantities in the cylinder head and the bottom of the cylinder block. The crankcase joint itself is literally sealed with a sealant, but the oil leaks through the tubes, cylinder head joints, plugs and timing cover. Oil appetite is also an urgent problem. The engine gets very hot, both because of the weakness of the cooling system as a whole and because of the flow in the hydro hydrodynamics of the cylinder block. The first two cylinders in the blocks are very prone to overheating and have a temperature 3-5 degrees higher than the rest. With any contamination of the cooling system, a decrease in the level of antifreeze or damage to the pump, the piston rings coke, for which there are purely constructive reasons. In opposites, the piston literally bathes in oil with its lower part, and after stopping the engine, the piston temperature rises slightly. The heat transfer to the oil disappears, and the piston bottom heats up its entire volume, while the temperature of the cylinder walls also rises more than usual. There is no thermosiphon effect typical for a vertical arrangement, when the hot antifreeze rises in the cylinder head and when it cools down, it goes down. In general, 3-liter engines without an oil appetite are either new engines with mileage of up to 120-150 thousand or those in which very good oils are used, or the cooling system of which has been modified to provide a lower temperature. Many owners practice installation to prevent problems thermostats at 80-82 degrees. This at the same time improves the mileage of rubber joints and plugs, and this motor has many external tubes of the cooling system. With all this, the engine has a good resource and a rather successful piston group, which with proper case care shows the wonders of the resource. Timing chain noises are also unfortunately a typical problem. The roller chains themselves are very reliable, but two of the three are very long, with complex tensioning mechanisms. The wear of chains and stars is relatively small. The problem lies in, in the cocking of the tensioners, which from a certain moment cannot compensate for the slackening of the chains. Vibrations in the chain finish off the dampers and wear out the stars. 
repair is quite expensive, at least you need to remove the front timing case cover and not break it. You can wash the tensioners, usually the chains remain native too, but worn out dampers with such defects have to be changed. An indirect symptom of a tensioner coking problem is a diesel roar that can be easily heard by a technician familiar with EZ series motors. Potential problems do not end there. The EGR valve is over, it is located right on the inside of the intake manifold and therefore very much pollutes the intake. The catalysts are not very reliable. After 200,000 mileage and or as the oil appetite grows, they can begin to dust into the cylinders. The cylinder head gaskets are regularly pierced, although the heads are quite short. The 3.6 AZ36D engine is an enhanced and improved version. The piston group resource of these motors is noticeably more stable and there are much more long levers among the motors. The main thing is that there are fewer overheating, which is difficult to explain, as well as cases of knocking and oil consumption. The threshold for increasing the comfortable oil appetite of 200-250 grams per thousand confidently stepped over 250,000 runs. On this information, both the problems of the Subaru Tribeca is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.